Here we are, and welcome everybody to Beefcake number 23. What a fantastic day. I'm so excited. I had an exciting event happen yesterday, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about that. But first, I'll kind of give you the, the rundown of what happened. I, I had a snake crawl into my pool, and a friend of mine, Stan Heffington, who is the actually the sheriff of Bahalia, He's been the sheriff here for, for many years, many generations. His family has owned that title. And he came by. He is he was riding his trademarked uh, donkey and carrying his lariat. And he brought a friend who's in charge of animal control. It seems as if this friend is not as big of a fan as my co-host, as most of the people in this town are. My friend wanted to leave a message for Mr. Rawls. And I'm going to let you listen to that message before I introduce him. And just momentarily. Well, well, the million dollar man. Damien and I don't forget, we remember all the times you made people grovel for your money. These were people far less fortunate than you. People who could use your money for essentials. And what did you do? You made fun of them. You humbled them. And you humiliated them. Well, now it's my turn. This time. You'll be the one that's humbled. This time, you'll be the one that's humiliated. And this time, you will be the one that grovels for the money. And how appropriate <laughs> that the money you grovel for is your very own. A victim of your own greed, wallowing in the muck of avarice. And here comes Mr. Vaughn Rawls right now, seemingly uh, unfazed by what he just heard. Yeah, I'm. You know what? It, this is my day. It doesn't. It does. It rolls right off. Doesn't bother me at all. I am here. I'm here with you. Doesn't even concern you even a little bit. No, I mean. It, it, What's the problem? Once you get to a certain level, and it just doesn't bother you anymore. I mean, once once people start hating you, man, that's that's when you know you've made it. But why Jake the Snake? What's the problem with Jake? Oh, he's you know he's got his own issues. Yeah, but there's a background you know. story here, and you're not telling. No, him. he's give it up. It's all it's untrue. Uh, Mr. Heffington, Sheriff Heffington, ha- had to restrain him. Listen, he, he I, thought you were here. He was ready to kick in doors. He was looking for you. Yeah. I was worried for a second. I thought you were going to say the sheriff didn't like me. And oh, I, no. And Stan's I know, a big, big fan. Yeah, Long-time fan. Yeah, that's not true. Yeah. Yeah, but I, Jake the Snake, that guy. Just just doesn't even concern you in the least. I mean, it does concern me in that I I feel like he has problems that he needs to resolve with himself, and I, there's nothing I can do about it. And if and if he needs to, uh, you know, use me as, as a uh, – uh, projection of his problems and that's fine but it has nothing to do with me always looking out for people and always rising above that's right that's you that's that's, that's me that's all me we're, we're going to talk about giving people their identity you obviously have a, an identity uh things that you relate to qualities that you relate to about yourself mm-hmm. and i wrote about that i had a conversation with a friend of mine and he is a little league football coach Oh, no. And, oh, no. I don't know. I, I don't think I could do that. He's perfect for it. Yeah. He, he's dynamite. He's been doing it for years, and he's so good at relating to these kids, and he's so good at teaching them life lessons as opposed to just harping on the sport of football and the right. wins and losses. Yeah, good for him. And he's one of these guys that has always had the it factor. You know, he's always been – a hustler. He's always been intense. He's always been aggressive. He's always been smart. He's always been kind. He's always just kind of made things look easy. And you and I both know that that doesn't exist. What he's done was he has worked his his butt off. Right. And he had a conversation with me and asked, how do I get my kids to play with that fire? How do I get them to love the sport, to be aggressive, to want to win? And naturally, I got to thinking about this. I, I told him I didn't have the answer to that. I don't know what or how to make anyone do anything, and I don't really think that's possible. And I thought that probably the best route would be just to show them how to do it mm-hmm. and let them make up their own mind as to if they 
want to do those things or right. not. Right. You mean in sports specifically or just in general, like just to have a fire about you in I, just in life, not right. not just on and off the football field, whatever right. it is that you're doing, how do you light that fire in someone? Yeah, I, th- I think the best way is exactly what you said, like just be the example. I which, agree with you. Which is hard. I mean, that's hard. Well, I started thinking about my identity, and then I went to my son's identity, my 10-year-old son, Grayson, who's playing basketball. Last year, he was – he had played a year before, but this was his first year really developing in the sport. And he had a really good, really patient coach. And after one game, he took Grayson aside, or he called him out in front of the rest of the team. And he said, great job at hustling, Grayson. You you hustle harder than anybody on this team. And you're an excellent rebounder. Well, from that day forward, Grayson has identified himself as a hustler and a rebounder. Uh And just like that, you know, before that he was kind of lost. He didn't know what he was going to do. He didn't know what he was good at. And it just took one coach, one brief moment, one person just to say, this is what I saw. This is what you are. And he took that and that's become part of him. Right. Acknowledgement. We talked about that before. I guess that is just a, a, it is just acknowledgement. Yes. Yeah, but it, it's you have to make sure that you are not afraid to tell people those things. And it, and that's a example with a coach and a child, but it goes I feel like it goes it applies across all of your relationships. And unfortunately, it the opposite is true as well. Sure. You know, if you're raised around people who tell you that you're not this or you'll never be that, right? Or you can't be this, then you'll relate that to yourself and that will become your identity right and I think as parents it's important to remember that we probably don't think about it very often but like you can you can say something to your child when they're young and 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 give them the impression that they can't do something like if you said oh you can't no nah, you can't do that you're just not you're not going to be able to do that and then they take that with them until they're like you know 40 years old sitting on some therapist's couch <laughs> and they and they find and they find out the reason that they haven't been successful for the last twenty years is because m- when they were younger, their parents told them they couldn't be, and they you believed know? that, and they believed it, yeah, because kids tend to believe what you tell them. Fortunately, I never had that. I, I always had the parents that were like, you know, whatever it is that you want to do, even as a six foot, two hundred and fifty pound guy that runs a five four forty. Sure, you can go play in the NFL. Mm-hmm. You can be a receiver if you want to. Of course, obviously, it didn't work out. And it wasn't going to work out. There wasn't much chance of it working out. But it allowed me to to set my sights on the on the next level and continue to set my sights on the next level, on the next level, on the next level, until I reached a level that I couldn't go any higher. Right. Yeah, my, my son is uh, – is uh, we, we've talked about that before, too, how much confidence my son has. And he's going to be in the NFL, and he's going to be on the NBA, on an NBA basketball team, and he's going to be a – a rock star, you know, all of these things at one time when he grows up. And I just love it. Like, I I, I will never tell him, no, you can't do that. That's not going to work because it's just awesome. Like, I love it. How exciting is that? I mean, that's exciting that he gets to wake up every day assuming that that's what his life's going to be. Right. And most kids do, right? I mean, most most children have wild, these fantasies. You know, they use their imagination and they, they have no limits. And then – then they end up growing up and losing all that for some reason. As well, they should. They should have these fantasies and these imagine right. this imagination. Sure. I have it. I have unrealistic expectations every day when I wake up. Right. But it makes every day fun, and so I don't think that there's any. I don't think there's a whole lot of good in being too terribly realistic. Right. I think that there's some bad that comes out of it. There's bad that comes out of everything. But. I enjoy waking up and believing whatever crazy thing that it is that I, I want to believe. I, I want to keep that childlike wonder. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I'm in complete agreement. And I think that's exciting that you can have that much of an impact on somebody else. Yeah. That it only takes a, a small sound bite. It just takes a, a very small, I noticed this and I think that's awesome. I right. think you do this well. Maybe 90 Nine out of a hundred people that you say something like that to will just 
blow it off as another part of their day. But there'll be somebody that, that catches that, holds on to that, and hopefully will someday come around and give you credit for that. Chances are they won't. Uh-huh. But it will still help to better someone down the road. Right. For sure. And and the the opposite is true of there's people there are people doing things that because they want you to say something <laughs> to them and if you don't it's going to have like the opposite effect. I I fish for compliments a lot, I think. I think I'm guilty of that. Well, I'm the king of not giving compliments. I'm the king of like people could fish for compliments all day long and I just don't see it. Like I'm like, "Oh, okay. Yeah, that's that's good." <laughs> it's interesting that you see that about yourself. Yeah. You feel that way. Oh, yeah, for sure. Do you look back and think, "Man, I should have said something?" Oh, yeah. Yeah, I can I can think of a million a million different times that that's happened man i admire you for recognizing that really so what i want you to do right now is go back to those million times well just take a percentage take about a thousand of those times and direct those compliments at me <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> right write them all down i have like a, I, have, I have i have 500 i have to do 500 <laughs> <laughs> until you mean it <laughs> Uh, and I also got to thinking that, you know, teachers and coaches and, you know, the parents and mentors, those people, unfortunately, really never get to reap what they've sown. Mm-hmm. It would be great if they could all know, you know, what kind of effect they have on people, kids especially. But I have, I think about high school coaches and middle school coaches and coaches when I was in fourth and fifth grade every day there's something that that one of them instilled in me you know or a parent or a mentor that has molded me and and given me the identity that i have and they'll never know that and that's a shame that is a shame but i think that uh as i do a better job of learning to communicate that i can change that and i need to tell people what impact they had on me and i need to tell people what impact that they've what impact they have on me. For sure. I think that's a, a good that's good advice for everybody to to pay attention, be present, and if you have something complimentary complimentary to say to somebody, make sure you say it. I also think it's important to to straighten out bad relationships and you might want to do that with, with Mr. Snake Roberts. Uh yeah. Okay. I'll reach out to him. You can't you can't rely on, on Sheriff Heffington to take care of all your problems. You're right. I'll reach out. I'll reach out to Jake the Snake and see see if I can fix that. Speaking of, of reaching and fixing, you need to reach down, grab a barbell, start deadlifting. That's right. And we have the program for you that was created by Mr. Vaughn Rawls. We do. We do. And uh it's awesome because uh, I've been watching a couple of folks in the gym who are on this program, and it's it's really neat to see their progress. You want to get strong, we got you. LiftHeavyRunLong.com slash deadlift. That's right. Uh, you can get the first two weeks of that program absolutely free. All you have to do is just go to the website, put your email address in, and I'll send it to you. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at LiftRunLong. Yep. Tweet at me, dog. I want to know what you got to say. You're tearing Twitter up, man. I'm loving the Twitter. You, you, you actually have sparked a new fire in me to be back on Twitter, which I haven't really been active on Twitter in a couple of years. Well, good. I like to yeah. see you on it. Yeah, it's fun. It's, it's a fun, different world. Review us on iTunes. Five stars. Say something nice about us. And send the send the mean comments in like an email. If or, you yeah, you, if, if you have any mean comments, just direct them towards me. Give them to Vaughn. Don't give them to me. It'll, right. it, it'll ruin me. I can handle it. That, as you've seen with my friend Jake the Snake. That's right. You know, if you, you need someone to blame, I'm here for you. Reddit.com slash R slash Lift Heavy Run Long. Follow us there. As always, music by Ted Horrell and the Monday Night Card. Go check them out. Uh, Ted Horrell, I know him quite well because I grew up with him because he's my brother. So go to iTunes, <laughs> Ted Horrell, Monday Night Card, get it. Get it. Make our voices heard.